شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصمه ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم اليسر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والسلام على عباد الله بن اصطفاء أما بعد We're living at a time where very often you hear of countries bankrupt. You hear the words maladministration, financial crisis, depression. Now, the Quran gives us the ultimate guide for every aspect. And while discussing the Ibadur Rahman, who are the true servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about one quality of them and He says, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا أَنْفَقُوا لَمْ يُسْرِفُوا وَلَمْ يَقْتُرُوا وَكَانَ بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ قَوَامًا They are those who are neither extravagant, nor are they miserly. They are on the middle path. When it comes to extravagance, then Allah says, إِنَّ الْمُبَذِّرِينَ كَانُ إِخْوَانَ الشَّيَاطِينَ The extravagant ones are the brothers of shaitan. And when it comes to the miserly ones, Allah says, وَلَا تَجْعَلْ يَدَكَ مَغْلُولَةً إِلَىٰ أُنُقِقْ they do not be so miserly and restrained. It is as though your hands are tied up against your body. You're not spending it all. We need to find the middle part and the balanced part. Now generally people think that, ah, it's my wealth. I own it. I can do what I want. I mean, who's going to tell me what to do with my wealth? This is only the ideology of those people who don't understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us trustees of the wealth. It's not our wealth to do what we want. In fact, we will be questioned, min ayn ektasaba wa fi ma anfaqa. Where did you attain it from? And how did you spend it? So both ways you're going to be questioned on the day of Qiyamah. Uh, how did you attain your wealth? From which source? Was it from a halal source? And how did you spend it? we accountable in both ways. And the big problem that we have these days is, Living beyond your means, where credit has been glorified. So we get involved, we purchase things that we can't afford to impress people that we don't even like. The thing is that we don't under realize how grave this issue is. It is said that our own beloved master, Nabi Muhammad, وسلم, one day a person had been martyred on the battlefield. And his janazah was brought in the front. And the Prophet ﷺ was about to perform the janazah salah when he asked the question, Hal alayhi dain? Does he owe anyone money? And they said, yes, he does owe people money. And then the Prophet stood back and said, Sallu ala sahibikum. You perform salah for your companion. Now who is saying this? Rahmatul lil alameen. That Nabi who was a mercy to mankind, and we spoke about it the other night, that he was an embodiment of mercy and compassion. That very Nabi who when there was an Abyssinian lady who passed away, and she passed away at an odd time, and the Sahaba decided not to inform him. They said that why should we trouble the messenger? So they took care of the bearing on their own, and later on he came to know, and he asked, where is the lady that would clean the masjid? And they said that we buried her because it was at the odd time we didn't want to give you trouble. And he went to the grave himself and he performed a dua there. He recited a dua. And he said that this grave is filled with darkness. Perhaps with my dua, Allah will fill it with light. That very Nabi who went all the way to make a dua. Yet when a person had a debt on his head, Nabi Sallallahu did not want to perform the salah. He said, you perform it. Until at that instance, Abu Qatala says, O Nabi Allah, I take it upon myself that I will fulfill his debt. And only then did Nabi Sallallahu then perform the salah. Such a serious issue. So we need to be very careful that we don't fall into debt and that we do not live beyond our means. There was this man who was talking to his friend and very casually, he's telling his friend, you know that my credit card got stolen. And the friend is surprised that, you know, he's so, so calm, even though his credit card got stolen. So he says, aren't you going to go report it? So he says, no, uh, the thieves are using it less than my wife. 
So that's why I'm not going to report it. The thing is that we are so tempted. There's so many demands that at every instance we are being drawn in. We are being shown adverts. We are being shown advertisements all the time calling us towards the dunya. So we need to be circumspect. We need to understand that we don't go to the shopping mall and just start purchasing because an item is on sale. Bazaar me jakir zururate mat karo. Very often we don't have much, we just have a few items that we need to purchase, but then we see this item is on sale, that item, and we get caught in that. And we give birth to new needs in the marketplace. So always think beforehand, do I really need this? Discuss with the family, do we need to make this purchase? And then you buy. In that way, you won't get caught into buying things you don't need, and also, you'll be saved from extravagance. That consult, and also think, and make dua istikhara, and then you do your purchases, and that way Allah will grant barakah. Very quickly, we focus on the story of Sulaiman a.s. Now, Sulaiman a.s. is referred to in the Quran 16 times. A very great Nabi, uh, who there's a long incident about him. Allah had granted him numerous favors, so that he had the winds under his command, the uh, jinnat under his command. He also had the shayateen, and he could understand the language of the animals. Uh, he was going with his army and he suddenly found that the hoopoe bird, Hudud, was missing. And he was angry at that, that how did the bird go without his permission. Eventually the bird comes back and informs him of a people in Yemen who has a queen ruling over them and that they are worshipping the sun other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He then sends the invitation to call them towards the deen of Islam. He sends a letter and she is to respond. But before she comes and responds to that, he then wants to show her the great favors that Allah has granted and he asks his people, أَيُّكُمْ يَأْتِينِي بِأَرْشِهَا قَبْلَ أَيَّأْتُونِي مُسْلِمِينَ Who will bring her throne to me before she comes as a believer? So one jinnat, قَالَ إِفْرِيتُمْ مِنَ الْجِنِّ أَنَا آتِيكَ بِهِ قَبْلَ أَن تَكُمَ مَقَامِقَ he says that I will bring it before you stand up from your place. And Sulaiman Islam is not impressed, even though it sounds rather amazing. He is in Palestine, she's in Yemen, about 2,000 kilometers. And he says, I'll bring it before you even stand up from this gathering. Sulaiman Islam says, I want something quicker than that. And then another stands up and says, The one who has knowledge of the book, I will bring it to you before you bat your eyelashes. I will bring it to you before you bat your eyelashes. So how does he do it? Instead of going physically, he makes a dua. And he was a scholar. And he made a dua. Ya ilahana wa ilaha kulla shay. Ilahan wahid. La ilaha illa ant. Uhdur arshaha. That oh, the only deity. There is no deity except you. You are the deity of everyone. Bring the throne. And this was the Ismul A'zam, that he made dua with the great name of Allah when the dua is accepted. So the throne is brought within the batting of an eyelash. Now it is mentioned, the ulama say, and this is my point here, they say that if this was the power, إِذَا كَانَ هَذَا قُوَّةُ عَالِمٌ بِتَوْرَاتِ وَالْإِنْجِيلِ If this was the power of the dua of the alim, of the Torah in the Injil, books that have been abrogated, then what is the power of the alim of the Quran, which is the best of Allah's creation, which is the best of all Allah's books. So we need to attach ourselves to the scholars of deen, and we need to value the book of Allah, and value the knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us.